All right, it's the end of the week here, and I wanted to give our table a chance to editorialize themselves. Let's start off with Anthony. Go right ahead. Last week, New York State passed the most sweeping and restrictive gun laws in the nation in the wake of the Newtown, Connecticut tragedy that killed 20 innocent children. I ask, will this law completely solve the problem? I acknowledge you don't need a machine gun to protect your home. However, it is a Second Amendment right to bear arms. <clears throat> gun laws are necessary to protect innocent citizens. There are some people that act recklessly and they should be punished, but not responsible gun owners. We live in a society that is becoming increasingly more evil. We revel in the world of video games that reward us for ripping a man in half. Society flocks to movie theaters to see characters whose sole purpose is to kill indiscriminately. So when will our political leaders confront the social numbing towards violence in the media? I know it's not as sexy as picking up a gun on TV and yelling, it should be banned. But if lawmakers are truly serious about protecting its people, then they must look at how the media glorifies violence in our society. Thank you very much, Anthony. Dominic. Mine is on the politicizing of Benghazi, and it illustrates everything that is wrong with Washington. Anytime an American ambassador, along with other Americans, are murdered, it is a big issue. Don't get me wrong here. But this week, it seems like the issue of Benghazi just came and went. The American people were literally told this alleged cover-up by the Obama administration was bigger than Watergate. But wait, did that only apply to Ambassador Susan Rice, who was up for the Secretary of State job? Because it sure didn't seem like it really applied to Hillary Clinton when she was questioned this week. First, critics said Clinton was ducking testifying on Benghazi by faking an injury. But a few days in the hospital and a blood clot in the head surely proved that wrong. So where is the smoking gun, you might ask, on Benghazi? Could it be this all was a plot to get Ambassador Rice out of the way so Senator John Kerry could get the Secretary of State nomination, which would free up a Senate seat in Massachusetts, and Scott Brown, who recently lost, could run again? But wait a minute. That's exactly what happened. And now the Senate seat for Massachusetts is available. So much for Benghazi. My conspiracy theorist, Dominic. <laughs> All right, Mark, the floor is yours. Well, I, th I decided I wanted to talk about the, uh, the thing we started the, at Kardashian and Beyonce <laughs> and say, I think in part, this is what we, we're going to talk about, but in politics. I think there's a yearning for a better representation here in New York and across the United States. People are fed up with traditional red state versus blue state politicians who purposely seek to divide us. I think there's a yearning for leaders to stop trying to make he headlines on symbolic issues like what occurred with gun control in Albany, simply to get elected and to start working on issues that really matter to us. Issues, for example, like the economy. How do we get the job engine going again? But doing what is necessary for our economy requires courageous leadership and tough choices. Governing is hard, and good governance is rarely ever noticed by the media. So the politicians continue to just promise the world to the electorate, just keeping spending as if there were no limits, and push the debt limit onto our children, and the media goes along reporting and the yelling and unachievable promises by politi politicians as if this were news, while the forest burns. So here is hoping we begin to have politicians emerge that are willing to tell the truth to the electorate about the challenges we face and actually offer effective solutions to address those challenges. And here's hoping that we, the electorate, mature enough to focus on what matters. Turn off the Kardashians or whatever nonsense and start holding our politicians accountable for delivering results on real issues that matter to all of us. Thank you. Got to get him a DVD of the first season of Keeping Up with the Kardashians. <laughs> All right. <laughs> David, you clean up. Yeah. Yeah. David, go right ahead. <laughs> President Obama's riding high in the afterglow of his second inauguration, but the signs of trouble ahead are already becoming clear. First off, it now looks like the U.S. economy peaked in the third quarter of last year. It grew at 3.1 percent, which was a huge leap up from the 1.3 percent it grew in the second quarter and the 2 percent it grew in the first. Perfect timing for the president's re-election campaign, bringing unemployment below 8% for the first time since Obama took office and robbing Mitt Romney of one of his chief talking points. But top economists believe that things slowed in the fourth quarter and again this year. 
Many are openly predicting that fourth quarter growth will come, at, will come in at between 1 and 1.5%, 1 and, and that growth is unlikely to top that rate in the near future. We're already seeing signs of an economy that's far from recovery. Retail sales in December, the most important shopping month of the year, were a total flop. The president may continue to claim that the economy's woes just aren't his fault, but in his fifth year in office, those excuses are wearing exceedingly thin. It won't help that his inaugural address included barely a mention of jobs or economic growth. He made his real priorities perfectly clear. All right, gentlemen. Very nice and on time, too. Our producer is shocked. We will wrap things up when we come back. Stay with us.